more than 100,000 people live in Hillsborough. Tens of thousands more come here each day for work. So how do we as leaders and public servants go about listening to those many voices, which often include different points of views and different life experiences? 45% of Hillsborough are from residents or from communities of color, making Hillsborough and Washington County one of the most diverse places to live in all of Oregon. So recognizing this, how do we include and involve marginalized community members in the city's input and decision-making process? Many of our community members have never had a connection with their government or their elected leaders. So how do we listen to develop, to develop trust and build relationships? Joining me here now to talk about leadership and listening to community engagement and outreach are Hillsborough Councilor Beach Pace, Marcus Mundy, the Executive Director of the Coalition of Communities of Color. Maria Caballero Rubio, the Executive Director of Centro Cultural de Washington County. We have Veronica Vasquez, Community Member and Civic Leadership Academy graduate. We have Aaron Morrison, a member of our Youth Advisory Council, our YAC, and also a member of our Public Engagement Committee. We have Ed Guzman, a communication specialist for the city of Hillsborough, and Amber Ames, our city recorder. Thanks to each of you for being here. Now, Councillor Pace, before we talk about where we want to be, I want to start by acknowledging, as mayor, where we are right now. And there's a reason why community engagement is a focus for us as a council. It's because we have work to do. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I know that the council believes that we have work to do, and we do. And something that has really inspired me is that when we were discussing this earlier this year, as we were setting council priorities and our guiding principles, we set this community engagement and outreach as a council priority and a guiding principle. And we did so unanimously. <laughs> that's, that's very rare uh, on council to have something unanimous. Um, when we're in discussions like that. And so that was very inspiring that we all know that we're, we're doing okay and we can do a lot better. Um, and I also notice and have seen a willingness to have challenging conversations and then pursue solutions from that, right? To say, we need to hear the hard feedback and that's how we get better. Um, and the ultimate goal is to work to make engagement accessible for everyone. So I think we'll hear a little bit about that uh, when regarding police reform, we change that up. And even this platform with the state of the city, we're changing it up and involving community. So um, I'm really proud that it's a guiding principle and that it's a council priority and, and it's and recognizing what we've done and what we need to do. Thank you. You know, and, and one of the ways to um, enhance and improve our community engagement is making sure that everybody has a seat at the table and that all voices are heard. And that's why, as you said, it's a council priority for 2021. And it's exciting to think of the work that's going to be done this year and the foundation that will be laid for years to come. So Maria, Marcus, and Veronica, each of you have extensive background in engaging with in our community. So what's an example of effective and meaningful community engagement that you've been a part of or seen in your organizations that's worked well in bringing more people's input into the decision-making process? And Maria, may we start with you? Uh, sure. And um, actually um, making this a priority for a city council says a lot about the city. So, um, really happy to be a, a, a resident of the city of Hillsborough. Um, so from my experience, I think I like to begin from the very basics. I think for a city or any organization, whether it be a nonprofit or a business, um, having a culture or adopting a culture and operating principles of engagement and customer service and making people feel safe um, making people feel listened to and that they are welcome, I think is a very basic to opening the door to community engagement and really making every employee of the city feel that it's their responsibility and not just the responsibility of the community engagement office to 
to do that. But from the janitor to the receptionist, to the cook, to the department director, everyone has this responsibility. And I think that that will open the door for um, making people feel safe and listened to. Thank you. Thank you very much. Marcus, what do you have to add? Oh, and, and you're on mute. Of course I am. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And while I agree with, with uh, everything Maria said, um, I, do, I too believe it, it's simple. You, you invite the community in, both as individual members and community-based organizations, to participate in the decisions that you have to make as a city. They're your residents, and they can help guide you along the way. And I, I've seen that at the city of Hillsborough. I've seen that in action, where you invited people in to the conversation about what to do with immigration uh, services and the policing issue, and you dealt with it, you invited them in, and the biggest thing you did as a city was you listened to the community and you made a decision that they had uh, urged you to make. The other thing you can do as a city, and I've also seen this at Hillsborough, is simply participate outwardly with what your community is doing. So don't just wait and, and invite the community in. You go out to them where they are, meet them where they are, let them know that you're interested in what they're doing. How can you be involved? How can you support their efforts? You've done that with our organization on housing and, and on uh, when we did our, our leading with race report. There's a lot of ways that you went out and joined the community where they were. And that is very important for any government to undertake. And the last thing I would just say is maintain the accessibility for your residents. I know I can pick up the phone and call your, your city manager and assistant city manager. I can call your housing uh, leaders, Chris and others. I can call these people, I can call you. We sat together on, on a Metro policy board for transportation, trying to get the right kind of transportation. That kind of access is invaluable to the community. So as long as Hillsboro has that rapport with its residents, uh, they will welcome the, the change in government that I'm hearing you all talk about today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Veronica. Well, first of all, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for this invitation. Um, yeah, definitely, as Maria and Marcus said, you know, it's important to continue working with the community. Uh, I remember a few years ago when you invited us to be part of this, uh, to learn a little bit more about the city and the government and definitely Definitely opened my eyes uh, big wide because I didn't know better. Now I understand and I want my community to be able to see what I'm seeing and to be able to engage and participate more actively. Definitely, uh, you know, all the work that you guys have been done, it's awesome and wonderful, but there is still a lot of, a lot of things that we need to work. So thank you. So Veronica then, you know, uh, I guess kind of using that as a springboard, you know, the work that we have to do, what's one thing, what's the most important thing for us as a council to keep in mind as we work to continue to partner and invite people? I think, you know, um, as Marcus says, when we approach or come to the city, you have uh, the, the, the people there, the more Spanish speaking employees, are there to help us, but also, you know, like understanding, you know, mayor and city, understanding the needs of our Latino community. I remember again, a few years ago about the city sanctuary cities, and it was, it was awesome to have all the participation there. It was, uh, I think it was packed, this, the, this place, uh, the civic center, but it's because the, the um, city council and the mayor saw the need of, how can we get involved? How are you protecting your citizens? And this is a great example. How do we feel welcome in the city? Thank you. And Maria, as you talked about the importance of adopting a culture, um, you know, which is such a beautiful way to frame that. So what's, what's one thing that you would say, you know, Steve and Beach and council, this is what you need to do to create and adopt that culture? Yes, yeah, so thank you. Um, so I think it's important, first of all, to really know the community who is out there. Um, don't expect me to speak about Latinos because I can live, I can speak about my lived experience and the clients that we serve. But at, we are such a diverse community and all of the communities of color who live in Hillsboro, I think that the city uh, should um, 
do a state of the community as session, kind of like the state of the city, but a lot just to listen to what the community is saying, where they are in this year, in this time, um, and just be listening to us and um, host us to have uh, lunch together or dinner together or something so that you become the listener and we, be we become the, the ones telling you what the state is of our communities. Thank you very much. And that ties in then, Marcus, with what you said in terms of being outward facing, because when we're inward facing, it's, it's more of an insular conversation. And um, so as I think about us, you know, making sure that we're, um, you know, outward facing as our organization and as a council, then what, what's one important way to make sure that we are reaching out um, and effectively engaging those who may not normally feel connected or welcome, you know, uh, in these conversations? You're on, you're on mute. <laughs> I am uh, still myself. Um, well, thank you for the question, Mr. Mayor. And uh, the one thing I can think of is actually, uh, it's a methodology we use in our research. We, you know, we have done research at the coalition. It's called community-based participatory action research. And what that outreach looks like is that we always, as Maria said, the community are experts in their own lived experience. We always check with the community first then we do, we go into government and we do our gathering of information and assimilating of the data and come up with some analysis and conclusions. And then we go back out to the community and check with them to see if our conclusions from our analysis of the data and what we heard from them originally is actually what, what is happening. And if it's not happening, that's where you make the final adjustment where it's a good balance for government and the city. But the outward facing part of that is that we include them on the front end and we include them on the back end. And that's what gives you a good research product, but it also is what gets you a very strong community that feels included in what you're doing. And so, you know, including on the front and the back end of a process is a perfect segue into our involvement with our youth. You know, because, um, you know, through our Youth Advisory Council, they tackle projects and issues and take it from beginning to end. And so, Aaron, you've been a part of our YAC for several years. And, and can you tell us and, and talk to us about how the youth are engaging with things in Hillsborough? Of course. And so thank you, Mayor Calloway. So as a four-year member of the Hillsborough Youth Advisory Council, I've had the most wonderful opportunity to work with high school students from all different schools here in Hillsborough who are dedicated to helping the city by working on community projects or advising city employees and council members, as well as passing local ordinance that we find important. The most notable being the Sustainable Shopping Initiative, which is the citywide ban on single-use plastic bags that was put into effect in 2019. The Sustainable Shopping Initiative reinforces the city's commitment to sustainability, environmental protection, and community health. And so we started the process and over three years, we were able to get full council approval as well as create the whole thing as youth. And so one of the Youth Advisory Council's newest programs is, it, is in response to COVID-19. In May, we are hosting a COVID-19 town hall designed to educate Washington County community members on the equitable registration and distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. Yeah. We will have a panel of experts and healthcare professionals who will provide an overview of the vaccine as well as detailed information about when residents are eligible and how and where they can register to receive those vaccines. And so we hope to see the community there. And thank you, Mayor Calloway, for having me here today to share. Aaron, thank you very much. And, and we hope to see you back in schools very soon as well. Um, thank you. Um, so Ed, you know, during COVID, you know, we've seen online engagement increase while in-person engagement has had to discontinued due to the health protocols that have been put in place by the state and the county. And so it's created a challenge, but also an opportunity. And so when we as a city sought to engage the community during the discussion about police review and advancement, 
you really helped lead that effort. Can, can you talk about the challenge and, and, and the opportunity? Yeah, certainly. And thank you, Mr. Mayor, for having me on. Um, with everything that went on uh, in 2020, as questions and concerns about equitable policing uh, rightly came up, um, but also being mindful that we were still in the middle of a pandemic, um, uh, we as a city were able to host listening sessions virtually, uh, both in English and Spanish, in early August. And certainly, you know, the opportunities to engage our community went beyond just the sessions themselves. Um, we, we were able to update our website uh, and make it easier to submit anonymous comments. Uh, we offered the option of voicemail and text uh, so community members could share their comments in English and in Spanish. Um, we use reader boards that typically provide uh, traffic updates uh, to alert people to the city website and what, what was available there and also to the discussion that was going on about policing and public safety. And uh, we also heard from community members uh, who attended protests this summer in Hillsborough and other places. And, and through all this, we we're able to consolidate that information uh, for council in order for them to be able to review uh, and provide direction for what the city should do. Well, and you also took part in online listening sessions in English and Spanish. And in your role with the city's communication team, you've led the way to increase engagement in Spanish during the pandemic. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, and, and on this count, I, I would want to give credit where credit is due to, to my friend and fellow panelist, Vero Vasquez, who, who told me in a conversation shortly after we first met, uh, Nuestra Comunidad Vive en el Face, uh, our community, the Latino community, uh, lives on Facebook. Um, and as the pandemic took hold and, and the urgency to reach and inform as many people as possible uh, became magnified, uh, we launched our Spanish language uh, Facebook page, Ciudad de Hillsborough, on June 1st. Um, it remains a fount of information, whether it's city updates or the sharing of information and resources uh, from community partners, uh, both close to home and across the region. And we've been grateful to all, all of their efforts as well in, in spreading the word about our page and, and just you know making that uh, just a two-way street. Um, and just making and being mindful of trying to meet people where they are, uh, at least digitally speaking in this case. Um, other Spanish language communication tools that I would, uh, that we bolstered in 2020 that I'll mention very quickly include um, Creciendo Juntos, our Spanish language email newsletter, which we now consistently send out twice a month. Um, we started a Noticias page on our city website, which provides Spanish language versions of many of the news articles that we that we publish. And in closing, I would just add quickly that, you know, we are certainly not saying that this is a replacement for meaningful in-person engagement. Uh, we absolutely understand that. And, and as many have astutely already noted on this panel, like it's the, the importance of that. Uh, but I just, it's more to say that we have taken a step forward in these areas that I mentioned. And we've demonstrated what's possible as we continue to make information and resources as accessible as possible. And, and so those strategies, you know, like the, the um, twice a month email and, and the Facebook, you know, really make sure then that our Spanish speaking residents are getting that same information as English speaking residents and, and there's no lag time. And so, you know, that communication is happening, you know, simultaneously, which again then goes back to, you know, helping to create that culture um, you know, and recognizing that all of our residents are our customers. So thank you for that. And Veronica, thank you for, for telling Ed to get that Facebook page going. That's awesome. Um, so Amber, you know, um, you know, since the pandemic came, you know, and, and we have stopped in-person meetings, you have helped us transition to online engagement for city council meetings and other meetings when we did not have any longer an in-person option. Can you share with us some of those things? Yes. Um, so out of safety and in compliance with the governor's order, we transitioned our city council and board and commission meetings to Zoom. And though we're not able to personally connect with our community members in that in-person format, I would say that we also have seen an increase um, of attendees who are watching our meetings or able to participate that may not have due to childcare issues or a number of issues, family issues that come up. 
Um, so that's been nice because we'll often have upwards of almost 100 people in a council meeting. And that's not always the case when we're in person. Um, we also try and reach out to people about our meetings through happening in Hillsboro. And we, um, we, we share a agenda preview the day before a council meeting just to share with people like the highlights of what the meeting, what's going to be happening in the meetings. And then the counselors also record a recap video after a council meeting, um, which also recaps kind of the main um, significant points in the meeting. And we share that through social media. And um, committee members can pre-register for public comment to speak at council meetings and board and commission meetings. And we also have options. So our, our parks and recreation department's done a great job of virtual engagement options um, to allow the community to provide feedback on projects such as the city's first adaptive playground or parks in South Hillsboro. And then finally, we're receiving many um, emails from our community members and business partners. Each year, we receive approximately 10,000 emails um, through our city website. So we're also engaging that way. I, I, I looked it up and in 2020, our city council reviewed close to 500 emails. Wow. <laughs> That's, both of those numbers are um, surprising and impressive. So thank you for your help with that. And I apologize, Beach, I think I interrupted you. No, it's totally fine, Mayor Galloway. Um, Amber, something you said uh, struck a chord with me is that I too have noticed that the number of people engaging over the Zoom meetings has increased and it's also changed. I do think that access has been increased, especially, you know, parents who maybe one parent's working or, you know, it's just too tough to and too expensive, frankly, to pay for a babysitter and then come into a council meeting, but they can engage from home. Uh, so I love seeing that. And uh, it, it's changing up who usually shows up, right? It's, it's affording a way for people to engage when they otherwise couldn't. And now they're making it a practice. And I love that. So, so besides emails or attending the meetings, a big part of engagement is being involved directly in the process of governing in, by being in service to our community. And that's a unique program that Hillsborough has with our Civic Leadership Academy. And uh, Councillor Pace and, and Veronica, both of you are graduates of Hillsborough, uh, Hillsborough Civic Leadership Academy. And so um, how did the Academy help you engage in your city's work? And how did that help lead you to where you are uh, sitting today? Well, um, I remember being part of the very first Civic Leadership Academy. And by participating in this Academy, I learned so much of how the government works. I understand we need to get involved in the city. Um, and sometimes people need to get involved. They don't know, they don't know better. I was in the same position. So by uh, participating in this leadership academy, I, I understand the importance of my boys. And by, by that, I saw so much need on delivering the message linguistically appropriate uh, between you know, the city and my community. So I came up with an idea uh, that I've been working for a couple of years after I participated in here in, in this academy, where we want to be that bridge between the city and um, in the community by creating uh, educational content where we have partnership with the city, with chambers, and with many nonprofit organizations. And you know, it's just been so wonderful to see how um, uh, this uh, Citizens Academy help me understand more and the importance of, you know, communicating, communicating in my own language. Nice, thank you. Yeah. Veronica, I, I would like to add, add to that. Yes, the communication just seemed to open up after that. And uh, so I appreciate you bringing that up. I had been volunteering in Hillsboro for years and then uh, decided to apply to the Academy and met all these other people that uh, in Hillsboro that I wouldn't normally meet. Uh, and so hearing their stories and understanding where they're coming from and then learning, uh, you know, the different levels of government and you mentioned your voice and um, learning how your voice can be expressed, right? What are the many ways that I can make sure a voice is heard, not just mine, but others. Uh, and that I, that's an aspect of the Civic Leadership Academy I loved. And it also opened the door to uh, me running for, for council because it actually seemed possible 
then. Uh, it didn't really seem possible before that. Uh, so it, it op opening up avenues of engagement and communication, I, I totally agree. And, and if I may say a few words in Spanish, so for my, that audience that is out there, like, I would love to say, amigos, involucrense activamente en su ciudad, en su comunidad, en las escuelas, participen para que su voz se escuche. Thank you. Thank you. So, I, and I heard participate in school, in our community, and, and thank you for that. And again, that's that's part of that external facing, part of that invitation, you know, that, that you know, Marcus and you and Maria were talking about before. And, um, and, and I would just say thank you for taking what you did in the academy and then taking it a step farther and many steps farther because um, that, again, enriches and strengthens our community as well. Um, I'm sorry that we have to come to a close. Uh, this has been wonderful and I've really enjoyed uh, the visit and the opportunity to, to talk. Um, you know, so we will continue the conversation, but hopefully it'll be in person and, uh, uh, and, and we'll continue to, to see how are we doing with engagement how are we doing with listening and how can we continue to do better? Uh, I wanna say thanks to Hillsborough Council Beach Pace, to Marcus Mundy, the Executive Director of Coalition of Communities of Color, uh, to Maria Caballero Rubio, the Executive Director of Centro Cultural de Washington County, to Veronica Vasquez, uh, who's a, uh, as you know, a Civic Leadership Academy graduate and one of our very important community members, Aaron Morrison, our YAC member and the public engagement committee member. Um, and good luck with the rest of your senior year and, and um, in your college experiences down the road. And Ed Guzman, thank you so much for being here, but thank you for your very important work in reaching out to uh, a community that is so critically important to our success as a, as a city, but a community that we haven't really done as much with. Uh, so thank you for that. And Amber Ames, thank you just for being the glue that holds us all together with so many meetings and so many different things. So, and, and thanks to all of you who are watching at home, whether it be on your computer, on your TV, on your phone, we are grateful uh, for your participation. We look forward to listening to you and having you engage with us. And so remember that there's uh, about five other of these videos for our State of the City for 2021. And we hope that you will uh, make that commitment to listen to all six of them. And we look forward to seeing you back here in person at a city council meeting sometime later this year. Take care, everybody. And thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.